Welcome to Lightning GIS. In this episode, we're going to go over a couple of air reduction procedures in Agisoft Metashape that can really make your final 3D products um, a lot better. Um, when Agisoft Metashape generates the sparse point cloud after um, lining up your photos, there's lots of erroneous tie points in that cloud. And what we want to do is filter out and get rid of those tie points. All right, our first step though is, because we're gonna to start deleting things from our model, and especially if you had a large number of photos input, um, your photo alignment may have taken a long time, like um, hours or even days. So before you start to delete things and, and do stuff that you can't undo, make a copy of the chunk. So what I do is I come over here, this is the chunk with the, the chunk in Metashape with the aligned photos that I want to start to uh, filter the noisy data from. Right click on that, select duplicate. Um, it may take a few minutes to duplicate. I've already done it here so that we don't have to wait during the video, but you'll end up with a copy. You can see here a copy of aligned photos and it's an exact copy of this original chunk. So it's just a backup. We'll hit save to make sure everything's saved. Come back to our original chunk and now we're ready to go. Okay. Um, first, the way that we do the filtering is with the gradual selection tool. There's actually three gradual selection steps that you want to do on your sparse cloud before you generate a dense cloud or a mesh. Um, in this video, we're going to cover two of them. After you do those first two gradual selection processes that we're going to do in this video, then it would be time to set the markers for your ground control points. Um, I've got a separate video for that, so you'll want to watch that. After the markers are set, then you can do the third gradual selection process, which is shown in a separate video. All right, so let's get to those first two gradual selection processes. All right, the gradual selection tool in more recent versions of Metashape is located under the model menu. Click on that. It opens the gradual selection dialog box. And the first one we're going to do is the reconstruction uncertainty. All right, now reconstruction uncertainty, what this does is it removes bad points from the sparse cloud due to poor geometry. So it's making an assessment of the estimated geometric accuracy of each point in that cloud. And if, um, if the accuracy estimate is not above the threshold, it will get rid of that data. So this just leaves us with our best data in the point cloud. The goal is to get this initial number, which in the case of my data sets 200, down to, uh, we want to get down to 10. If we can't get 10, 15 is still pretty good. And in the absolute worst case, we want to get this number down to 50. But we don't want to take too many points from the point cloud. If you look down here in the lower right corner of the window, there are 314,028 points in our point cloud. So I'm just going to go all the way down, and you can either slide the slider or just type a number in. Let's see what happens if we go to 10. If we go to 10, I'm getting rid of 70, 000, about 71,000 out of 314,000. Um, that's less than 25%. And if we take a look, the pink points are the selected points. Um, they're pretty... They're pretty homogeneously distributed across our model. They might be a little more dense out here at the edges, but the edges are where we're gonna have the least certainty because there's the least amount of overlapping photos. Um, but through most of our model, it's pretty uniform setting. Um, I don't like to remove more than 25% of the points in one go when I'm using this particular tool. So if I had more than 25%, I'd try a lower threshold. Maybe I'd only do, you know, move this number down to 90, delete those, run the optimize, and redo. Um, so what I'm going to do here is since I'm less than 25%, I'll, I'll leave my threshold at 10, which is our ultimate goal. Hit OK. Then I can either use the X button up here on the toolbar to delete those selections or the delete button on my keyboard. So that just deleted. it. You can see now we're left with 242,000 um, or so points. I'm going to run the optimize tool 
We can get to that through the Tools menu, Optimize Cameras, or we can switch to the Reference pane, and this star icon here is the Optimize tool. Um, when we're doing the Optimize for these gradual selections, we want to choose F, C, X, C, Y, K1, K2, K3, P1, and P2, and leave the other three distortion parameters unchecked. And uh, for this project, we're not going to mess around with these settings down here. Hit OK. We run the Optimize. Usually that just takes a few seconds. If you want to see some details about what's going on, you can open this up. Okay, the Optimize tool just completed. Um, it took about a minute for that to run. It, the, the time that it takes will depend on how many points are in your point cloud, how fast your computer is, and so forth. Um, as we remove more and more points, the Optimize tool will run faster and faster. All right, now for, um, for our reconstruction uncertainty, we always want to run this tool at least twice. Even though I got down to that um, desired threshold of 10 right away, I want to come back in, choose the Gradual Selection tool, Reconstruction Uncertainty. Um, I want to set this down to 10 again. And you can see that just selected eight points. Um, so you just want to make sure that after you do this, that you're not getting a bunch of points again with just a few points. That's perfect. That's what we want. Um, I'll go ahead, select OK. I'll delete the eight points. I'll run the Optimize again. And that probably will take a little less time than it did the first time. We'll wait for that. Okay, that optimize has completed. So now what we can do is we can move on to the next gradual selection tool that we're going to use. We'll use um, the projection accuracy tool. And this tool, what it does is it removes bad points from the sparse cloud due to pixel match, matching errors. So when we did that photo alignment, Metashape is trying to line up all the overlapping areas of each photo and then identify pixels, which turn into tie points, that show up in all the overlapping photos. So once the same tie point, maybe you have nine photos that overlap of a specific area, it'll find a pixel in that area that's in all nine of those photos, and that's your tie point. Of course, it's making guesses and estimates about if this is truly the same point in all these photos. So what we're doing here is looking for the ones that are the least certain that Metashape feels least confident about. Our goal is to get down to a threshold of two or three. You can see I'm starting at about 109 here. It will be different on every data set where you start, but we want to get down to about two or three. But it's very important that we never remove more than 50% of the points in any one step. Now, right now I have 242,000 um, and change points. Um, let's just go down. We'll just type in three here. That uh, gets me down to 77. That removes 77,000 or so points out of 242. So that's less than 50%. So I could go all the way down to three in this first step. Let's see what happens if I go to two. Now, when I go to two, that selects 177,000. 178,000 points, so that's more than half. Um, if I go 2.5, I'm less than half my points there, so I'm just going to go with a 2.5. That removes um, a little bit less than half my points. Click OK. Once again, the pink selected points are homogeneously distributed across the model. That's good. If all our selected points were um, sort of concentrated in one area of the model, that means we have some sort of problem and we'd have to address that, but I'm not going to talk about that here. Um, deleted those. Now I'm down to 133,000 points. We run the Optimize tool again. The same set of distortion parameters are selected that we used for the Reconstruction Uncertainty tool. Hit OK. We'll wait for this to run. All right, that first Optimize has run. Now we're going to need to run the projection accuracy again to see if we can get down closer to that threshold. So projection accuracy. Um, let's type in two. That's our ideal goal of where we'd like to get. And that selects 70,000 out of 133,000. So that's less than half so we can do this. Now I'll note, this is a really clean data set. We had really sharp pictures. Um, 
and uh, sort of ideal conditions when we when we collected this data set. So it runs really well. I've processed it before. Um, other real world data sets that I've worked with, sometimes it takes me nine or ten iterations of this because you can only select so many at one time, less than 50% to get down and sometimes you just can't get down to this goal of two maybe you can only get to three sometimes we only get uh, sometimes we can only go a little bit higher um, and that's why we duplicate that chunk at the first step so that if we need to we can go back and restart all right so i'm going to hit okay my points are still well distributed very homogeneously distributed i'll hit delete now we're down to about sixty-three thousand points We'll optimize again, same set of distortion parameters. We'll let that optimize tool run and we'll wait for that. All right, the optimize tool has completed. Um, it runs faster every time. And I'm just gonna check this one more time. I'm gonna click on gradual selection, projection accuracy. Um, we're down to two and at two, no new points are being selected. Now, if there were a handful of points, maybe 10 or 15 or even a few dozen points selected, I wouldn't worry about that. If you open this back up after you're optimized and uh, you have hundreds or thousands of points selected at this threshold that we've already deleted, you just run it again. Delete those points, run it again, optimize, and get this. Uh, ideally, you want to happen what we did here, which is you get down to zero selected points at your threshold. I've learned, though, that sometimes you can just keep it, it, it'll keep coming back with just a handful of points again. So don't worry about those, that's no big deal. I'm just gonna hit cancel because I have no new points because I didn't delete anything. I don't need to optimize. All right, now the next step is to um, come in to our reference, on our reference toolbar panel and the settings. And we wanna change this tie point accuracy from its default of, of one to 0 0.1, I'm going to hit OK. That resets my view. If you want to, you can rotate this back around to the view you have been using and are used to. Um, and then we need to optimize again. But when we optimize now this final time, we're going to check all our distortion parameters, all the remaining distortion parameters. So everything's checked now. So we hit OK and let the optimize run. All right, so our optimize is run. We took our, through the gradual selection process here, we've reduced our sparse point cloud from uh, well over 300,000 points down to just 63. Now that sounds like you, you've really thrown out a lot of data, but what we've done is we've thrown out, we've thrown out the erroneous data and we've left the very best data in our point cloud. The next step is to set markers, which is shown in another Lightning GIS video how to do that. After that, it's time to come in and do the third and final gradual selection procedure, which is reprojection error, which I show in yet another video um, that you could watch after you set your markers. Okay, thank you for your time and attention, and I hope this Lightning GIS video was helpful in getting you going in error reduction in Agisoft Metashape. Thank you.